Good morning. What a special day it is today at Epcot. My name is Melissa Valacat. I'm the Vice President of Epcot, and I couldn't be more happy to welcome you here today for this special occasion in our park's history. Epcot is a place like no other. Its very fabric is made up of diverse ideas and people who come together to present authentic and engaging experiences for you, our guests, each and every day. Walking around the World Showcase, we're all able to travel the world and become inspired by the sights, tastes, and sounds of so many cultures. Here we discover that though we may be from different places, we are all connected together as one community. Today, I am honored to welcome back our special guests who are very much a part of Epcot's extended family. They represent the community of artisans who have handcrafted our original totem here in Canada. And this morning, we are here to dedicate and celebrate the arrival of two new handcrafted totems true works of art. I'm sure you'll agree. As we all look to the future and expand our view of Epcot, we continue to build our heritage by opening the door to authentic experiences for everyone to enjoy. Now it is my honor to introduce to you the gifted artist, one of the carvers of these beautiful totems. He will introduce our troupe of cultural performers and also officiate this morning's ceremony. Please join me in welcoming Mr. David Boxley. That means hello everybody. Thank you. We are the Gidhon, the people of the salmon. Sumshan, Haida, and Clinket people are the people of the totem pole. We invented the totem pole. We're proud to represent our people from the Northwest. We're extremely proud that some of our people have journeyed a long distance from Alaska and, and, the, and Seattle to witness what we're about today. The songs and the dances you are about to see are very old. So are the totem poles. I want to say something really quick about the totem poles. Totem poles were never worship. Totem poles are not religious. They are a signboard that says, this is who lives here. These are the great stories of the people that live in this house or in this village. We hope that this, this will continue, that we're very proud that Disney has put out, put, a, put the, the, our honor forward and, and shown great respect to have us do these, these totem poles. And we thank you very much for coming to witness this today. It wouldn't mean anything if you weren't here. Why what? That means okay. Actually means a lot of things. It's like aloha in my language. The first song we're going to do for you is the Chief's Headdress Dance. This is a very old song in the hundreds of years old. Our chiefs wore headdresses like this. Normally we would have them be spreading, spreading down as a sign of peace between our people and all of you. And you might see some residual down come out from previous dances. But we're not using that today. Uh, we, we, might, uh, we might get the uh, cleanup people a little excited. <laughs>
Doric system, Doric system. The stance group has existed since 1996. We've uh, been very fortunate enough to travel uh, extensively to to show that the culture of the Northwest Coast and uh, the native people of the Northwest Coast is alive and well. These young people, of whom I'm very proud, dance with enthusiasm. We hope that if you can, you can come back tomorrow and see our full performances right down, right behind, uh, down on the walkway here, uh, a couple times tomorrow, a couple times Sunday. We're going to show you a whole lot more than you'll see today. We use a lot of masks. We're going to use some masks today. I want to tell you a story. The totem pole to my left. A little boy was walking along the beach near his village and he saw an eagle trapped in some fishnet. He took a knife and he cut the net and the eagle flew off. Many years later the boy had grown to become the chief of the village. He was walking along that same beach and he was very worried because his people had had no food because the fishing season had been just awful. There was no, no food to eat. And he was walking along thinking, what can I do? What can I do to, to save my people? And then a live salmon fell out of the sky. It flopped around at his feet and he looked up and there was that same eagle that had come back to repay the kindness from so many years before. And day after day after day after that, the eagle would bring salmon to help feed the village and pay back this young man for his kindness. It's a very old story and my favorite story from my, from my childhood. So th that represents the two figures at the top of that totem pole. The second two figures are a, are a beaver story. This dance you're going to see right now illustrates that story. The mask you're going to see is, a, is, is that magical eagle revealing itself from the natural eagle to the, to the supernatural. This is called Eagle and the Young Chief.
system. No ice system. Thank you, thank you, thank you all very much. I'm going to introduce my son. My son helped me carve these two totem poles behind us. He's going to tell you the story of the killer whale totem pole. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a real honor for us to be here. We were here uh, nearly 19 years ago to put this one up, and uh, it's a very fortunate life we've been able to live thanks to my father uh, and Disney. So uh, it's quite an honor to be here. The totem pole behind me tells the story of the very first potlatch. Potlatch for our people is uh, notary public. You invite guests, you make claims, and you feed, and you pay the witnesses, and that puts a stamp of legality on whatever uh, the people are doing. If somebody's become a chief, you have to throw a potlatch. Story goes that there were these men out fishing, and they decided to anchor their canoe. What they didn't know is that they'd anchored just above the house of the chief of the sea, Chief Nagonox. And he heard the scraping of the anchor on his roof, and he sent a fish up to go investigate a cod fish. And the cod was uh, splashing the water near the canoe, and one of the fishermen was annoyed, so he grabbed the cod and he broke one of its fins and tossed it back in the water. It swam down and it told the chief what had happened, and he ordered that his people bring them down to him. So that's this killer whale is bringing one of the fishermen there down to the undersea world. And they had a big event where the chief made sure that they promised that they would never harm one of his people ever again. And he got the sea, all the sea creatures and monsters, supernatural beings, to promise to never harm men after that. The men, all the men in the canoe were given great gifts and a copper canoe to send them back to their people. When they got back, they thought they'd only been gone for four days. They were gone for four years. They came back and showed their people what they had done at a big potlatch of their own. Years later, sadly, those men were out again and one of them didn't listen and they harmed another creature of the sea and the canoe was sucked down uh, to the bottom of the ocean and that the head of that canoe uh, fishing party had to stay with the chief forever. This next song we're going to do is a killer whale song. Thank you all for spending your time here with us today.
just down below the stairs here, there's a, a mask wall. It shows masks open like that. So when you take your pictures down there, you know the kind of masks that, that uh, they're referring to. Are these, the regalia we're wearing is meant for winter ceremonies on the northern northwest coast. So uh, it's a little warm today. It's wool and leather and fur. Um, this next song we're going to do uh, is part of the ceremony of, of raising any totem pole. Traditionally, they would all be done by hand with ropes and uh, people would pull them up, but you know, modern days we, we have cranes to do totem pole. Um, but part of the ceremony uh, is a carver's song. And this is a carver's last responsibility before the poles are officially handed over to their owner. And uh, so in this song you'll see my father's going to dance. Uh, a goal in his life, he thought, someday I'd like to be able to carve 75 totem poles. This is 75 and 76. Woo! I'm very honored to sing for him today. You'll see in the dance that he looks for the log and he carves the pole and then celebrates its completion. This is the Carver's song. <laughs> today from Disney would please come up and join us along this line along with our dancers and uh, I see somebody in a button blanket out in the crowd if you'd like to come and dance too please. This is Jen Schoolcraft, she's from our village at home. Thanks for coming Jen. So this is called Happy Dance. So the men that are lined up down the line are going to be pulling in fish nets, and the ladies are going to be picking berries. And this is a song we do at the end of the season when we celebrate the year's harvest and we get ready for the winter. Uh, it's winter now, but you never know it. Um, this is uh, our our last song, and then uh, 
we'll have a parting, uh, parting word for you all. But thank you very much for being here and helping us celebrate today. Uh, our people are divided up into four matrilineal clans. And uh, we've helped some of these folks learn how to dance. And they'll be doing one of the four clan dances. The crests are Eagle, Raven, Wolf, and Killer Whale. Oh, and there's a special one. I don't know if anyone will do it, but uh, you'll notice it when you see it. <laughs> So she requested I speak on her behalf at this ceremony to unveil these two totem poles that have been created and carved by David Albert Boxley and his son. Metlakatli Indian community, which is located on Annette Islands Reserve in Alaska, is home to the Simpson people. Holds great pride in knowing that our culture and art is being brought across the country for people from around the world to enjoy at Disney World. Mr. David Albert Boxley's roots in Metlakatli are very deep. He is a teacher, culture bearer, and role model for all Simpson people. His totem poles and other fine carvings can be found all over the world. His impressive career has lasted more than three decades. Mr. Boxley is also the father of two men who are impressive artists in their own right. Zach Boxley is a Bentwood box and drum maker. David Robert, uh, she says something very nice about me and I'm too humble to read it. <laughs> Today is a special day. Today marks an important milestone in Mr. Boxley's career. This is the 75th totem pole and 76th that Mr. Boxley has carved out of cedar. 
Our community is beaming with pride knowing that Simpson legends depicted in these magnificent sculptures are representing our pe people. Both poles demonstrate world class craft, world class uh, craftsmanship. On behalf of the Metlakatl Indian Community Council, executives, and membership, I congratulate the Boxleys for this monumental achievement. The Simpson of Metlakatl, Alaska, are very proud of your hard work, your leadership, and for always being strong ambassadors for Metlakatl. Ams up some good job, Mayor Audrey Hudson. Well, what a special morning this has been already. I, I'd like to just say thank you so much to the Get One Troop. Uh, what a beautiful performance and moving as well. And so I hope you all will join me in congratulating this group for such a spectacular morning. and Walt Disney World, we are humbled and honored to receive these wonderful gifts from your tribe. They will be a very meaningful addition to the Canada Pavilion and to Epcot and to Walt Disney World. So in closing, thank you all for joining us today for this momentous occasion. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day exploring the wonder here at Epcot and exploring the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. Thank you all.